Whether you have diabetes or not, there's a good chance that you have encountered messaging that demonizes potatoes. Given this, you might be surprised to learn that in their whole form, potatoes are a delicious and nutritious food for people living with or without type 2 diabetes. But how are they healthy if they are spiking up my blood glucose, Jose? Well, in this video, I'll teach you a few things that will lessen their impact on your blood glucose. There are many misconceptions on the role that potatoes can play on a diabetes-friendly diet. The controversy tends to revolve around one factor, their high starch content. However, this doesn't mean that potatoes are inherently off limits for people living with type 2 diabetes. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Type 2 Diabetes Revolution channel. If you're new here, my name is Jose. I am an exercise physiologist that has helped thousands of people lower their blood glucose, and I'm very glad to meet you. Today, we'll review how potatoes impact your blood glucose levels, and we'll also go over some tips and tricks so you can enjoy potatoes even if you're living with type 2 diabetes. But before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you are always notified about our new content here on YouTube. For daily content, you can also follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Our name is Type 2 Diabetes Revolution. So, do potatoes raise blood glucose levels? The quick and simple answer to this question is yes, they absolutely do. But that is because all foods with carbohydrates will raise your blood glucose levels, which is a normal physiological response. So, let me say this from the beginning. Let's not be afraid of whole complex carbohydrates. When it comes to carbohydrate-containing foods, we want to focus on how high and how quickly this carbohydrate raises your blood glucose. And for this, we can use a tool known as the glycemic index of foods. The glycemic index is a system that assigns a number from 0 to 100 to carbohydrate-containing foods to determine how much that food raises your blood glucose levels. The higher a food's glycemic index, the faster it raises your blood glucose levels. Generally speaking, if a food scores above a 70, it is considered a high glycemic index food. The glycemic index is categorized as the following. Low GI foods, 55 or less. Medium GI foods, 56 to 69. And high GI foods, 70 to 100. There are many kinds of potatoes, each with their own GI values, which vary greatly according to the cooking and preparation method. So we'll get into those as well. Though, in general, potatoes usually fall within the medium and high GI categories. There's no getting around the fact that potatoes will have some kind of an impact in your blood glucose. So how can they play a role in a healthful diabetes diet? Well, let's get right into it. The question you may have right now is, can I eat potatoes without dramatically spiking my blood sugar? Before we get into the tips and tricks that will allow you to eat potatoes, even if you have type 2 diabetes, I want to be clear about something. Here at the Type 2 Diabetes Revolution, our method teaches people how to reverse the underlying cause of type 2 diabetes known as insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is synonymous to being carbohydrate intolerant or responding unfavorably to all types of carbohydrates. Yes, even healthy ones like potatoes. However, when people follow our plant-predominant approach, their insulin sensitivity increases. And as a result, whole plant-based carbohydrates like potatoes no longer drastically raise their blood sugar levels. To learn more about our approach on how to reverse the underlying cause of type 2 diabetes, go to the description below and download our free resources. However, if you're still insulin resistant and you don't want to follow our method, that is okay. You can still enjoy potatoes. So I'll go ahead and teach you a few things about potatoes so you can avoid dramatic spikes. Let's get into the variety of potatoes. What is the best potato to eat for people with diabetes? As I mentioned earlier, not all types of potatoes have the same impact on your blood glucose levels. And interestingly enough, even if your potatoes are of the same variety, they can still have different impacts on your blood glucose 
according to how you prepare them and how you cook them. So we're going to get into that as well. Because the preparation method plays a role in determining the GI value of a potato, it's tricky to say that one variety of potato is better than the other one for people with diabetes. But in general, some kinds of potatoes elicit a more favorable blood sugar response. Waxy potatoes like red and fingerling, for example, have a lower GI value than starchier varieties like russet or Idaho potatoes. Sweet potatoes, however, tend to have an even lower GI value than all of the varieties that I just mentioned. This is why sweet potatoes are commonly recommended for people living with diabetes. You might be surprised that sweet potatoes are not technically potatoes. Even though both are root vegetables, they're only distantly related. So to recap, we have sweet potatoes at the lowest on the GI scale. Then we have waxy potatoes like red and fingerling. And highest, we have starchy potatoes like Idaho and russet. So what is the best way to cook these potatoes if you're living with type 2 diabetes? You have to understand that cooking is a form of external pre-digestion. For example, when you mash potatoes, you're making it easier for your body to digest them, hence spiking your blood sugar levels faster and higher. In general, boiling them tends to have the lowest GI response. Next comes baking, which tends to yield medium to high GI values. And finally, mashed or instant potatoes tend to have the highest GI values. By all means, avoid instant prepackaged mashed potatoes. So again, boiling is the best. Then baking and mashing tend to yield medium to high GI values. But here's a cool trick that I'm going to teach you that lowers the GI value of potatoes even more than just boiling them. When you boil potatoes and then cool them in the refrigerator for at least 24 hours, their starch composition changes for the better. Potatoes contain a particular kind of starch known as resistant starch. This type of starch is harder to digest than normal starch, which helps lower the glucose raising effects of potatoes. For example, one study found that freshly boiled red potatoes had a GI value of 89, pretty high. But once they were cooled, the GI value decreased to 56. Interestingly enough, reheating those cooled potatoes doesn't cancel out this GI lowering effect. Because of this, feel free to boil your potatoes, cool them for 24 hours, then reheat them and enjoy them warm. We also recommend that you leave the skin on the potato whenever possible. Not only is the skin full of nutrients like magnesium and potassium, but it also increases the fiber content of the potato. This fiber boost can play a significant role in lowering the glucose raising effects of potatoes. Finally, please be mindful of the effect that frying can have on potatoes. The act of frying potatoes in oil increases the fat content of the food, which will actively work against you if you're trying to reverse the underlying cause of type 2 diabetes. To learn more about how fat increases insulin resistance, I would recommend watching the masterclass attached in the description below. It's 100% free, it's about one hour long, and you will learn exactly what you should be doing to reverse insulin resistance. Okay, so nobody eats potatoes by themselves, right? So what should you eat with potatoes if you have diabetes? When deciding what to eat alongside potatoes, first you have to recognize that potatoes play the role of the starchy vegetable in your plate. It's important to balance out your plate with some other vegetables that are not very high in their carbohydrate content, such as broccoli, spinach, lettuce, you name it. A side salad would do. And then an added protein source preferably a plant-based protein like tofu, lentils, chickpeas, beans, you name it. Please also be mindful of any toppings that you put on your potatoes. Common potato toppings like sour cream and bacon are going to increase the fat content of your meal. The high amounts of saturated fat in those toppings will dramatically decrease the healthfulness of your dish. Instead, you can consider healthier choices like a plant-based yogurt, some chives, nutritional yeast, and sea salt. Okay, so let's recap. 
potatoes, and type 2 diabetes. All in all, if you have prediabetes or type 2 diabetes, you can absolutely include potatoes in your diet. Just be mindful of the cooking and preparation methods, serving sizes, and what you choose to enjoy alongside your potatoes. So here is the practical tip of the video to enjoy potatoes with the lowest GI value possible. Choose sweet, red, or fingerling potatoes, boil them, then cool them for 24 hours, and if you like, you can reheat them and enjoy them. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with somebody who might benefit from it. Also, if you would like to reverse insulin resistance, the root cause of type 2 diabetes, don't forget to take advantage of the free resources listed on the description below. Take care of yourselves and we'll see you in the next video.